SpaceX's grandest upcoming rocket was once known as the Interplanetary Transport System, or the Big Falcon Rocket, but most recently it has settled on the name Starship. SpaceX founder Elon Musk has announced a complex and ambitious plan to put crewed Starships on Mars in the coming decades. The plan involves several flights and reflights of both the Starship vehicle and the Super Heavy booster, upon which the Starship flies. Ultimately, the goal is to have a system through which hundreds of people at a time can travel to Mars, whether to colonize or just to visit, at relatively low cost. While this goal seems insane to us today, if the system Musk proposes really does run at its optimal speed, like a well-oiled train line, interplanetary travel may become something that we begin to see a lot more of. An important part of the spacefaring machine, however, is rocket fuel. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Starship and Super Heavy are planning to use liquid methane and oxygen, or methalox, as the fuel source for their gigantic Raptor engines. They chose this particular fuel for several reasons. Its cost, its minimal wear on the rocket's tanks, but most importantly, for its ability to be created using elements of the Martian atmosphere. We'll get to that in a moment, but right now, we have a more pressing problem. Let's say SpaceX just launched a Mars mission into low Earth orbit. Great, all the people on board with their heavy luggage are very excited. The problem is, people and stuff are heavy, and so they used all their fuel just getting up to orbit. This next part is the first genius part of SpaceX's plan. To send up three, maybe even four, tanker vehicles, each of which is sent up to orbit on their own Super Heavy vehicle. These tankers have no people on board, they are controlled by computers, and they are very lightweight, so they can carry tons and tons of fuel. Literally, tons. About 120 tons of liquid methane and oxygen ready to be burned into water and carbon dioxide again. They will also transfer quite a bit of excess hydrogen to Starship. Keep that in mind, we'll use it later. Reusability is a key part of the plan here. Each of the super heavy vehicles used to launch all of these Starships will, in theory, be landed very close to the launch pad ready for refurbishment and immediate reuse. Musk has claimed that he hopes to be able to ready the vehicle for another launch within just 24 hours. This is the rocket equivalent of a six second pit stop. Those 24 hours would be extremely busy work, cleaning, inspecting, and performing maintenance on all the rocket parts ahead of another launch the very next day. Once the tankers are in orbit, they will carefully dock to the crewed ship and transfer over almost all of their fuel, leaving just enough to return back to Earth and land safely. They will undock, drift away, ignite their engines, and if all goes according to plan, the almost empty tanker will return directly back to the launch site, on a designated landing pad much like the empty Falcon 9 boosters do today. At the end of this rapid and hectic process, the crew in orbit will now have a full tank of fuel, enough to assist them on deep space voyages. In theory, this refueling process could take as little as a week if the company were really trying to rush it. The crewed ship will expend pretty much all of its fuel on the trip to Mars, mostly in the initial escape burn to leave the Earth's gravity well but also some minor trajectory adjustments along the way to fine-tune the encounter with the Red Planet. Once the brave crew arrive at Mars, they will be greeted by a ferocious entry burn. Starship will use Mars' own atmosphere to slow it down. It's a process known as aerobraking. Starship, however, will be coming in very hot after its journey from Earth, so it will likely make several passes through the atmosphere, burning some of its fuel each time as well, and using the atmosphere with its fins to slow it down. After enough braking, the crew will finally pinpoint their exact landing spot and begin the final descent. For much of the flight, Starship will fall like a skydiver, using its fins to maintain attitude and bleed off more and more speed. Upon final descent, Starship will flip its nose upwards and ignite its engines in order to safely touch down on the Red Planet. This process 
will use up almost all of the fuel on board the ship. As you can imagine, the crew will get out and do their thing. If there have been prior Starship missions to this one, it's possible that there's already a community, or maybe even a colony, that can greet them as they arrive. Whatever they do, as they go about their time, Starship is doing something very important. The chemical formula for methane, the main rocket fuel that Starship uses, is CH4, i.e. it's made up of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms for each methane molecule. While the crew are busy with the science and exploration, Starship is processing Mars's atmosphere into rocket fuel. You see, Mars's thin atmosphere is almost entirely carbon dioxide, CO2. By using electricity produced by its solar panels, Starship can break this molecule into oxygen and carbon atoms. The oxygen is stored as fuel for the return home, and the carbon atom is taken and combined with the hydrogen we brought along, making methane. This process takes some time, but by the time the crew have finished their mission, the vehicle has processed all of its onboard hydrogen, and now has a huge tank of fuel, ready to take them all home. So, let's fast forward through the return trip. Give those scientists an opportunity to look at all the awesome rocks they found in caves, and see what happens when we return to Earth. At Earth, Starship does something similar to what it did at Mars using the atmosphere to incrementally slow down the vehicle, bringing it back down to a speed that will eventually allow it to land. After all this, Starship and its crew will land in the same way the tankers did, on a landing pad just a few miles from where they launched all that time ago. And throughout this whole mission, not a single piece of equipment was launched that was not returned right back to the launch site. That is the ideal Starship mission, and I hope you can see just how powerful it could be if developed and refined correctly. Thanks for watching this video, I had a lot of fun writing it, and it's a super interesting topic. If you liked this, make sure to subscribe, because we make all sorts of content, some like this and some not like this. If you have any crazy ideas about what we should cover next, whether it's Starship or not, please comment it below and we'll see if we can get to it. So thanks again for watching and goodbye.